Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'll be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Fractal Design. This is North Excel and it is a larger improved version of their very popular North case. I absolutely loved the looks of North but it just didn't offer enough space for what I wanted to do with it. In terms of radiator support it was quite limited and when you put radiators in certain places particularly at the front it really limited what you could do with your graphics card. Now Fractal Design have been listening to our feedback and they have released a larger version of the case which solves all these problems while keeping the stunning looks that North has. So today I'm going to be showing you step by step how to put all the parts I've got in front of me together today to come up with a fully working PC by the end of the video. Okay let's take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using Nasrox Phantom Gaming Z790 Riptide Wi-Fi. For the CPU, I'm going to be using Intel's i9, the 14900K. Attempting to keep our i9 cool, which is easier said than done, I'm going to be using Noctua's NHD15. For RAM, I've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 at 5200MB transfers per second. For storage, I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive for this build. It's from Samsung and it's their 990 Pro in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build, I've got a fully modular Platinum ATX 3.0 power supply from Fantex. It's their Revolt 1000. And I'm also going to be using the Revolt cable kit in black. And finally, for the graphics card, I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 480. Okay, that's all the parts. Let's get building. So just like North, North Excel comes in two different colours. There's the black version with the walnut front grille and there's also a white version with an oak front grille. And each colour comes in two different options. There's a temper glass side panel and also a mesh side panel. To remove our side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws on the back which we need to loosen. Once these have been loosened, we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards, tilt it out and lift away. And our other side panels removed in exactly the same way. Take a look at our front I.O. and North Excel has a really premium feel with a gold power button and gold surrounds and all our other ports. So as well as the power button, we've got a separate headphone and microphone jack. We've got two USB Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. And the Type-C port does support speeds of up to 20 gigabit per second. To remove our case's top panel, we've got this leather tab on the top and it's just a matter of pulling it backwards, then lifting up and away. Take a look at the back of our top panel, you can see there's no separate dust filters and frankly are going with just mesh on the top of the case. Although as the holes in the mesh are pretty fine and most people will have the top as exhaust, this shouldn't be a problem. If you want to take advantage of North Excel's increased size and go with a custom loop, you'll be pleased to see we've got a cutout for a fill port on the top of the case. In terms of fan and radiator mounting at the top of the case, there's no removable brackets, so you're just going to have to screw things directly in from the top. But your options here have been significantly improved from the original version of North. Up top you can actually fit now up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. The original North was only up to a 240 millimeter radiator. And in terms of fans, there's up to three 120 millimeter fans, two 140 millimeter fans, or in fact, if you really want to go big, you can actually fit up to two 180 millimeter fans at the top. So if you get the version of the case that comes with the mesh side panel, it comes with a side fan stroke radiator bracket. On this bracket you're going to be able to mount up to two 120mm or two 140mm fans or up to a 280mm radiator. The fans are going to go on this side of the bracket while if you do put a radiator on it's going to go on this side. Just be aware if you're going with a radiator on the front it is going to impact on your GPU width significantly. So in terms of holding the fans in the case there's little clips here which are going to hold the fans in place while you screw them in. So it's just a matter of setting two 140mm fans here and they are going to slot into place. So that's really nice to see that we can actually fit two Lian Li Uni fans on this side mounting bracket. A lot of case manufacturers, they only account for their own fans and these Lian Li Uni fans are actually quite thick. So really good the Fractal have considered this when making this bracket. So you can see with these two fans at the bottom, set to intake, bringing plenty of cool air in. This is going to be great for cooling your GPU. I did some thermal testing on the first version of Fractal North and I did show that these two fans here did improve your GPU temperatures significantly. There is some downside to ever to adding the fans in. The first is extra fans are going to come at extra cost, both in terms of financially and also in terms of noise levels. The other thing is it is going to limit your GPU width slightly um, by 30 millimeters. So down to 162 millimeters from 192 millimeters without this bracket installed. In terms of your CPU or color height, the maximum height supported in this case is up to 185 millimeters. Now, depending on how wide your cooler is, it may or may not be impacted by this bracket. 
But either way, it's going to be somewhere between 155 and 185, depending on whether this bracket gets in the way of your air cooler. So it is possible to move this bracket up to the higher position. We've got two captive thumb screws on the side that we need to loosen. And once they've been loosened, the bracket is free. There's little clips on this front side of the case. We can swing the bracket out and lift it out. And we've got two notches at the bottom, which we were inserted into. There's also two notches at the top. And it's just a matter of slotting the bracket into the top notches, pushing it round, and then re-securing it with the thumb screws. So you can see your main advantage here is going to be in terms of improving your CPU cooler. And you can imagine having a radiator on the top set to exhaust, bringing all this cooler just in in front of it, and then exhausting out the top should give you absolutely brilliant temperatures. Um, in terms of the downsides, if you go with the CPU cooler, it is going to limit the height. You're down to 155 millimeters in terms of height for your air cooler compared to the 185 millimeters without this bracket at the top. In terms of your GPU width, you see it's going to sit down below this bracket, so there's going to be no limitations. You've got the full width of 192 millimeters with the bracket installed at the top. At the rear of the case, you can fit up to a 120 or 140 millimeter fan or radiator. But Fractal haven't stopped there because to improve your GPU cooling, it is actually possible to mount an 80 millimeter fan on the rear PCI expansion slots down below your graphics card. Now this is a 92 millimeter fan. I just don't have an 80 millimeter one to show you, but it gives you the idea. You're going to set your fan down here, and then you can screw it in through these holes in the back to secure it. And then we come on to Fractal's standout feature is this walnut front panel in the black version, or you'll have an oak front panel on the white version. To remove it, it's just a simple matter of pulling the panel off from the bottom. So we take a look at the back of the panel. You can see we've got a nylon dust filter here. There's three clips on each side, which we just need to loosen. And then we're going to be able to remove the dust filter for cleaning. So we shouldn't have any problems with airflow getting in from the front because Fractal have installed three 140mm Aspect PWM fans. If you prefer at the front, it is possible to mount up to a 420mm radiator. So if you didn't want to go with the front radiator, you're going to need to remove this access panel. There's a captive thumb screw here. We're going to need to loosen. And then with it loosened, we're going to be able to slide the panel backwards, tilt it out, and lift away. So in terms of motherboard support, the case now supports motherboards up to E8X in size. And you can see we've got these two sets of rubber grommets over towards the right-hand side of the motherboard, as well as rubber grommets above the motherboard. So you can see at the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal PC expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is 413 millimeters with the three installed case fans at the front of the case. If you do want to mount a radiator at the front of the case, that's obviously going to reduce the length for your graphics card. And that comes down to 380 millimeters. Moving into our case's rear compartment, and in terms of cable routing, it's good to see we've got rubber grommets on these six cutouts. And we've also got cutouts under here as well. Um, great to see we've got Velcro cable straps over here, and we've got plenty of other cable tie-down points as well. In terms of cable reading space, this looks to be adequate at 29 millimeters. So taking a look up towards the top of the case, we've got this four-port PWM hub, and our three pre-installed case fans are already plugged into it. And it's great to see we've got this additional port, which will be perfect for adding a rear fan into place. So it's great to see we've just got a PWM connector coming from the hub, so there's no additional SATA cable that we're going to need to plug into our power supply. So in terms of the rest of our cables, we've got a HD audio connector to let the separate headphone and microphone jack in the front of the case work. We've got a USB 3.0 cable to let the two Type-A ports in the front of the case work. We've got a USB-C cable, and this will support speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second, provided you're using a motherboard header that allows you to reach these speeds. And then we've got our front panel connectors, which come as separate cables. We've got a two and a half inch drive mounting bracket behind our motherboard. To remove it, we just need to loosen up this cap to thumb screw, and then the bracket can be tilted out and lifted away. And on this bracket, we're going to be able to mount up to two two and a half inch drives, just a matter of setting the drives onto here. And then we're going to be able to use the screws in the case accessory box to screw the drives in from the back before securing the bracket back on the case. So down at the bottom of the case, we've got two hard drive trays. We've got our case accessory box in one of them. I'll remove that and show you what it contains later on. So to remove the brackets, there's a captive thumb screw on each of them, and you're just going to be able to loosen it. And then once it's been loosened, you're going to be able to slide the bracket towards you and remove it from the case. So in each of these drive trays, you're going to be able to mount either a two and a half inch drive, a three and a half inch drive, or one of each. You can see we've got holes at the bottom here for your two and a half inch drive. So it's just going to be a matter of setting your drive into place, and then you've got holes on the back to screw it into place. So if you want to go with a three and a half inch drive, 
Again, it's just going to be a matter of setting it into the drive cage. And you can see here, we've got some holes on the side for screwing it into place. You'll see there's an additional set of holes further up and they're the ones you're going to use if you're going to be using a two and a half inch drive as well. So we can set our two and a half inch drive into place and we'd screw it in from the back. And then you're going to be able to set a three and a half inch drive in on top of it. And then you're going to have a little bit of a gap between them. So if I lift this up into place here, and then you're going to screw it into place here. So you're going to be able to fit one three and a half inch drive and one two and a half inch drive on each of these drive trays. So with our rear hard drive cage removed, you can see we've got additional slots that we can remove our drive cages onto. And there's a nice diagram in the manual which tells you your compatibility in terms of your power supply and your radiators at the front, depending on where you mount the hard drive cages. So out of the box, both the drive cages are secured as far towards the front of the case as possible. And that is going to give you your maximum length for your power supply in the case to support full sized ATX power supplies. And with both the drive cages in this position, it's up to a maximum length of 175 millimeters. So the only downside with the drive cage in this position is you are going to be limited to a 360 millimeter radiator at the front of the case. So you can see the front drive bracket is slightly impacting this front fan stroke radiator bracket here. If you do want to go with a 420 millimeter radiator at the front, you're going to need to move both drive cages back one position. So you can see moving the drive cages back one slot, we've now got a bigger gap at the front. So you are going to be able to fit a 420 millimeter radiator up to a maximum thickness of 30 millimeters. If you do need more than 30 millimeters, you are going to have to move this front drive cage back another slot which will allow you to install a thicker radiator, but the only problem is you're then going to have to remove the rear slot. With the drive cages in this position, you have significantly reduced the length for your power supply. You're down, down to 140 millimeters from 175 millimeters with the drive cages move one slot further forward. Um, they're the only two positions you can have the drive cages in if you want to have both of them installed. Obviously, what you can do is remove one of the drive cages and put the other drive cage in any one of these slots to optimize for your power supply compatibility and also your front radiator mounting. So it's really nice to see that we've got a removable bracket for our installing our power supply. So there's two captive thumb screws on it, which we're going to need to remove. What we're then going to do is fit this bracket to the back of our power supply, and then we're going to be able to slide everything straight in from the back. So it's also nice to see that we've got a Velcro cable strap for helping manage the cables coming down at the back of the case. Another nice touch, you can see the gold trim that Fractal have installed on the feet. And in terms of a dust filter for our power supply, we've got one here, and it's just a simple matter of pulling it out from the back. So this is what comes in our case accessory box. So we've got plenty of cable ties, and we've got all our screws individually packaged. And it's nice to see we've got a little diagram on the back of the case accessory box telling us what each of the screws is used for. So we're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to be doing a lot of our installation before we actually put the motherboard into the case. So we're going to be installing our CPU, our CPU cooler, our RAM and our M.2 SSD. To open our CPU socket, we need to push this lever down and out and bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard. And then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can take our CPU, making sure we've got the text the correct way up, lower it down gently into the socket. Once we're happy it's seating correctly in the socket, we can close the cover down again. I like to give it a little push here and get the black bit of plastic to plop off at this stage. We'll pop it in the motherboard box for safekeeping. And then we can go ahead and close this lever to secure our CPU in the socket. Next, we've got our M.2 SSD to install, and we've got five M.2 SSD slots in this motherboard, one behind this top heatsink, two behind this middle heatsink, and two behind the bottom heatsink. The bottom four slots are Gen 4 slots, while the top slot is a Gen 5 slot. Now there is a downside to installing a drive in this slot. It shares PCIe lanes with our top PCIe slot where we're going to be installing our graphics card. So if we install a drive in this slot, the top PCIe slot will run in by 8 mode rather than by 16 mode. So we're much better using one of the Gen 4 slots. So I'm going to be installing it in the top Gen 4 slot. So we need to remove this heatsink. We can then line our drive up with the slot, push it into place and go ahead and flatten it down. We've got a little clip here which we can close to hold our drive in place. Take a look at the back of the heatsink, you'll notice we've got some plastic protection over the heat pads. I've already used the motherboard before in the top slot and that's why there's no plastic protection over this one. But if you're using it from new, make sure to remove the plastic protection from the slot that you're planning on using. And we can then replace our heatsink.
We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'm going to open the clips on the slots. Then we can take our RAM and line it up with the slot. Once I have everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. Then it's exactly the same thing with our second stick, line it up with the slot and some firm pressure. We can take our LGA 1700 backplate for our CPU cooler and pass it through the holes in the back of the motherboard. Then we've got one of these blue spacers to go into each corner. We've got a bracket to go on at the top and at the bottom. And then we can secure it into place with four thumb screws. We can then add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. We can then lower our CPU cooler down, line that up with the bracket beneath. And then it's just a matter of tightening up the screws on the cooler in turn. So I'm going to start off with our middle fan, just lower it down between the two heat sinks. And once I've got it where I want it, I'm just going to pull this tab to get it to clip into place. Same thing on the other side, just going to straighten the fan up and then we'll pull this tab to get it to clip into place. Okay, so we can take our other fan and set it into place on the front. And again, where we've got it lined up, it's just a matter of pulling the tab to get it to clip into place. And then same thing on the other side. So with our CPU cooler, we get this double splitter cable. So I'm gonna take the cables coming from each of the fans and plug them in to the double splitter cable. Our CPU fan header is this one at the top of the motherboard. So it's just a matter of lining the cable up with the header and pushing down into place. And in this excess cable that we've got left, I'll just pass through to the back of the case once we've installed the motherboard. We can then set the motherboard into the case, line that up with the standoffs at the back. So what you'll notice is once I get the motherboard into place, the middle standoff will go through the middle hole in the motherboard, help holding it in place. And then we can secure the motherboard to the case using eight of the plain screws from the case accessory box. If you follow along to this guide, you will definitely find it easier setting the case down on the back and then setting the motherboard in. So you're not going to have to worry about supporting the weight of the motherboard and it falling down. I do it just this way to give you a better angle of me installing things. So we're now going to be able to take these cables coming from our CPU cooler and pass them through the rubber grommets to the back of the case. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go in this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard. So you can bring the cable through the cutout and plug it in with the HD audio text facing up the way. And then we'll just pull the access cable through to the back. Our front panel connectors are going to go to this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring them through the cutout. And starting off with the top row, pins one and two are for power LED positive and power LED negative. And next to that we can plug in our power switch. And then again we'll pull all the access cable through to the back. Our USB 3.0 cable is going to go into this header here. So we can go ahead and bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push into place. Above this, we've got our front panel type C header. So we'll bring our cable through, line it up with the header and push into place and pull all the excess cable through to the back. We've got a system fan header just between these two cables. So I'm gonna bring the PWM cable coming from our fan hub through, line it up with the header and push into place. And we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. I'm gonna be installing a 140 millimeter fan in the rear of the case set to exhaust. So we can screw the fan into place from the back. I'm just going to pass our fan cable through to the back and there is a little clip up here just above our motherboard's I.O. shield which is going to help hold this cable in place. So we've got two options for this fan. We could just plug it into our fan hub because we do have one spare port. The only slight issue with this, if we add up the maximum amps that each of these fans are going to be drawing, our fractal fans are 0.24 amps and the BQuad fan I've used at the back is slightly more, 0.4 amps. So this takes us over the one amp that each of our system fan headers in this motherboard will support. We could plug the connector coming from the fans into our pump header, which supports up to two amps. But I think the simplest thing is just to use one of the spare fan ports on our motherboard. So we've got another system fan header down here at the bottom of the motherboard. So we can bring our fan cable through line it up with the header and push into place. We're now ready to install our power supply and I've gone ahead and plugged in our 24 pin cable, two 8 pin EPS cables and our 12 volt type power cable for our graphics card. We can then use four of our power supply screws to secure our power supply bracket to the back of the power supply. So one more thing to point out about our power supply, it has a hybrid mode where when the power supply is under low load, the fan stops spinning to help reduce noise in the build. We want this button in the outer position 
to have it on this mode. So when it's pushed in like this, the hybrid mode is turned off. And when we have this button all the way out, hybrid mode is turned on. We can then pass all our cables coming from our power supply through the case. And importantly, this is our power supply's intake fan, so we're going to want to install it with it facing down the way. And then we can secure our power supply to the case by tightening the two thumb screws. Our two 8-pin EPS cables are going to go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard. So we can bring them through the cutout, line them up with the headers, and push into place. And then we've got some cable combs on the cables to help organise the cables. Our 24-pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then again, we've got some cable combs on the cable to help organise it. We're now ready to install our graphics card, so we need to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. Then we can open the clip in the top PCIe slot on the motherboard. Then we can insert our graphics card, line that up with the slot at the back. And then once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card and it is going to clip into place. And then we can secure the graphics card with the two thumb screws we've just removed. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with our graphics card, and push into place. And then we can use the cable combs to help tidy up the cable. So just before we start cable management at the back, I just don't think these cables coming from our CPU cutter running through to the back of the case look tidy at all. So rather than passing them through to the back, I'm just going to tuck them in behind the heat sink. Okay, so that's those cables tucked down and out of the way. Just going to give the fans a spin, and they're definitely well out of the way of the fans, and I think that just looks a bit cleaner. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management. So that's the build complete and looking absolutely stunning. Not my usual setup. I've gone with an air cutter rather than an AIO and no RGB, but I thought this was the case that would suit it really well. And I was completely right. This build looks absolutely stunning. If you don't know how to set the PC up, I have made another video covering all of that. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. What I'm planning on doing now is a bit of thermal testing, and then I'm going to be back with the case review. So hopefully you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide. If you have, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.